to catch it, actually, it fell. But luckily, the lid held up. From my angle, it looked like you caught it. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's perfect. Okay. <laughs> what was it? What was an executive of uh, Best Buy? Um, it's just one of those games. Oh, oh my gosh, like it got on, you're like, right. Bone, yeah, it got, like, it's bad. It's yeah. just, it's I know. Always, I got this from I, the I actually will calm down just sitting here. Whenever you get like it. Yeah, it's kind of like a break to sit this still. This is, like, the most relaxing thing I've done all day. It's just, <laughs> it's just so I don't have to run the meeting. It's like, it's, like it's like when you get a little tiny cut, you can get a little tiny cut on the forehead, and it's, it's wow. more blood than can yeah, be in the community. Yeah, that's not how I felt yeah. about this right. last meeting. It's the same kind of thing. Like but yeah, I also find that, like, unfortunate thing we can have to talk about is happening in this meeting. Like, every procedural, like, thing that we have to do. It's sort of true. Like, oh, well, like sure. So, did you put that hard for? Not that way. You're ready meeting. I can see you. Oh, yeah. All right. So did you go to the find out. Are we ready? Guys, we're starting on time because we have a time constraint to talk about. Those. So it's 7:01. So I no, not at that clock. But um, thank you. I'm checking the beach camera. Oh. Are we good? Just a second. Bob or John? It's the one who texts most of the time. We're transitioning you, Ralph. We could have separated a little. Shall I say more? <laughs> I mean, it would have been really apparent if they put me over there. Uh, no, that's Ralph's story, not you get the kids' table. The June meet the June meeting will be a, a little bit. He's saying sad words, but his face is not doing sad face. You're <laughs> certainly welcome to sit over here if you like. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Just think that after you come after it, you can sit out there, like in the summer. You can sit uh, out there. I could still watch it on H camera. I have one more question. Yeah. You're not gonna. You're not gonna show up. Please by consensus before executive session so that you all don't have. Good to know. <laughs> All set? Great. Um, good evening and welcome to the Thursday, May 11th, 2017 meeting of the school committee. Um, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I will take a very quick run through our agenda, and then we will get started. We first tonight have a public hearing on school choice. We will then have recognitions. Um, we will then move into our first opportunity for public comment. We will have reports to the school committee from the student council, from Mr. Bishop, liaison reports, the school committee chair report, the superintendent's report, as well as a quarterly financial report from Mr. Dumas. Under new business, we have capital project school department articles. We have school choice um, vote and discussion, EpiPen delegation renewal, the middle school handbooks, the middle school student activities account for robotics, the superintendent's salary adjustment, which actually we will be moving out of order until after executive session. And then we have our second opportunity for public comment and items by consensus. And then we will enter into executive session and re-enter in open session to have a final vote and discussion and then adjournment. Um, at this time, I would seek a motion to enter into public hearing for school choice. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Graziano, seconded by Mrs. Birchman. This is a roll call vote. Jean? Yes. Nancy? Yes. John? Yes. Kelly? Yes. And I'm a yes. And we are now in our public hearing for school choice. Is there anyone here from the public that would like to speak on behalf of either side of the choice or the non-choice of school choice in Hopkinton? Okay, I used the word choice. Sorry. <laughs> um, Okay, seeing nobody from the public here to discuss this matter, we I would seek a motion to close the public hearing on school choice. So moved. Second. 
Motion by Mr. Graziano, seconded by Mrs. Birchman. Again, a roll call vote. Jean? Yes. Nancy? Yes. John? Yes. Kelly? Yes. And I'm a yes, and it's unanimous. And we have now exited out of the public hearing, and we can enter into the recognition um, portion of our meeting. Dr. McLeod. Thank you. Um, tonight, we have representatives from Destination Imagination. Um, Mr. Ghosh is here um, as a community representative, actually, and a parent who's involved in the program. Um, I know you've heard about it before, but we wanted to recognize Destination Imagination for all of their accomplishments because this is a, not because, period. This is a group that does a lot of behind the scenes work and there are student representatives here um, to, talk about their, to, to talk about their accomplishments as well. Um, but to introduce the group and provide a bit of an overview, um, Mr. Ghosh is here. Um, so come on up, Ashok. Thanks for having us. Uh, I have the uh, honor and privilege tonight, actually, to introduce um, Raman Aurora, uh, who's joining me uh, this evening. Uh, and he has been uh, involved in Destination Imagination, uh, as he was just telling me this evening, for over 11 years, uh, I guess starting when his daughter was in uh, third grade. And now she's just recently graduated from college. So uh, he's been engaged and actively engaged in, in the program for that long. Uh, over the past four years, he's been the uh, coordinator for the town of Hopkinton um, and has kind of helped chaperone many teams and really helped grow the program. So we really uh, want to thank him for that and thank him for his dedication to the program. Um, tonight, he has uh, a few team members, uh, I think a senior team, that have been active and involved uh, in the program for uh, many years, and they're going to tell their story as well. So I'm going to turn it over to Raman, who's going to tell you a little bit about the program. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you everyone for having us here. Um, Destination Imagination, in case you don't know, is, is really um, a supplemental educational program like none other that I know of anyway. Uh, it, it provides uh, such a great opportunity for children, you know, right from kindergarten all the way to high school and even beyond to, to learn so many things. And, and I, I can't even begin to tell you, you know, how many things the children have an opportunity to learn. They learn working with each other. They learn you know, technical skills. They learn engineering skills. They learn how to you know, do, do drama, costumes, prop design, uh, time management, uh, you know, working with each other, uh, learning with, you know, how to deal with things when things don't go their way. Um, it's like, like you know, I've heard people say, it's like an MBA in, in four months or six months that, that uh, they, they do. So you know, again, uh, they, at the beginning, generally it starts in October. Uh, they get you know, a choice of six or seven challenges. They, the, the teams pick the challenges themselves. Um, they could be technical, engineering, improv, um, more, more you know, acting, and, and so on. Um, and and they, they pick their challenge, and then they solve it according to their interpretation of it. There's no, no right or wrong way to do it. Um, you know, everything, uh, how, uh, you know, as long as uh, there's a saying, saying in that goes, that unless it says you can't do it, there's any way you can do it. Um, Hopkinton has had great uh, support and participation in this program. This year we had uh, 14 teams. Um, every year we have you know, anywhere from 85 to 100 kids participate in the program. This year we had 14 kids, oh, sorry, 14 teams, um, of which six teams went on to from, from the regional region, which is about you know, 8 to 10 towns, to the statewide. Uh, competition which is usually held in, in uh, WPI. We had six teams there and from there on we have four teams now going to the international uh, the, the international um, uh, uh, competition that's going to be held in Tennessee this coming Memorial Day. And, and kids from over 22 countries come to participate in that. So, and, and participation like, you know, four teams, we've not had that in, in, a, in a number of years at least. Uh, the program has been growing significantly there used to be more school involvement with the program, and I wish you know I, I would uh, like to see more of that come back. Um, but again, thank you for all the support we've been getting, and I have a high school team that's been doing this, and they're graduating this year now, and they are among one of the four teams that are going on to the, the globals, and I'd like them to come here and tell their story. Thank you.
Okay, so um, personally, I've been involved with DI since I was in third grade, um, so just eight years old. I know my mom um, kind of became aware of the program from other moms in the um, in the Hopkinton School District, and I know um, the same with you guys. We actually, Riley and Emma joined when they were in seventh grade, um, and even though like some of us started in third grade and then they started in like seventh or eighth grade, it still had such a huge impact on our lives and in building our characters and will definitely prepare us for the future, um, especially in college. Actually, I know throughout the 10 ish years that um, many of us have been doing this, we've definitely learned team building skills, um, being able to like solve really intense scientific challenges. We actually used to do fine arts challenges and then switched over to science, which was very intense. Um, having to come up with a prototype for a difficult, um, difficult problem is an example of something that we've had to do. So in the past, we've had to create our own hovercraft. Um, do you guys want to share what we did this year at all? Um, so this year, <laughs> yes, um, we made a we had to oh. create an uh, decryption device. So basically, we had to um, make a way for one of our team members to get a riddle from one of the judges. And basically, from there, our team would have to encode it. And then without saying anything to the other person, a different team member would have to go and decrypt the message. So right off the bat, that's 10 points or nothing. So for the whole challenge, we had to get, I think it was like 240 points. So um, with the 10 points, it helped a lot so that was a big thing that we had to do for it and with that comes a lot of like trial and error it took like like two and a half months to figure out something to make and then actually <laughs> build it um, so uh, time management is something that this program has really taught us um, you know it either makes or breaks it as we say. Yeah. So that's just um, a few examples of the insane scientific things that we've had to do, but I think um, also one of the biggest things we've learned is how to think critically. So um, not only in our main challenge, we also do instant challenges, which are quick um, improvisational challenges where we have about five minutes to solve something and come up with a huge skit really quickly or create something out of like straws and styrofoam cups. And it's um, something that's very difficult, takes lots of practicing to be able to do, but um, through lots of practice, we've been able to kind of um, work at that and become a lot better at that. And um, even further than that, we've seen younger um, DI members be able to kind of see them at the beginning of the process where we once started. Um, Riley and I have both coached third grade and fifth grade teams. So being able to actually give back to the Destination Imagination community and teach them what we've learned through our past managers has been such a rewarding experience. And it's so great to use what we've learned um, and teach them and kind of hope that they sort of follow in our footsteps and continue with the Destination Imagination program. Um, and even further, the DI program has actually given lot of, lots of scholarship opportunities. It's fantastic learning experiences, great for college. Um, and I know that in the future, whether some of us are going into engineering or political science or communications, we'll all um, be able to use the skills that we learned in DI um, once we get to college and even past that. And aside from all that, it also kind of teaches you, like, you know, the value of friendship like I know like before this program like like Erin and I like weren't really friends like we knew each other in the hallway but like now it's like if I need something I go to her and like all of us we're all there for each other like yeah and right it's something away. we would never um, honestly we would never be friends if it weren't for DI so <laughs> it brings together it's okay, so many different time. people yeah <laughs> it, so you really get to connect with people and um, the people that were on my team in third grade and fifth grade and seventh grade are all different than um, those of us on the team now so sort of had these like long-lasting friendships with them um, even after doing maybe a year of Destination Imagination because it's just so intense and it um, really requires you to work very closely with those people. So that was my question was, you know, do you <coughs> stay with the same team throughout? So clearly people may leave and people may come, but you have the same core. Yeah. Yes. And I think you called your leader a manager. Yes. Mm -hmm. So do you also have the same manager? Yes, we've had the same manager um, since third grade, actually, um, wow. Linda Holly, which is Heather's mom. Um, wow. She's been insanely helpful. That's great um, commitment. But managers really, like, they have so much to do yeah. um, to be able to kind of help us because one of the biggest things about DI is um, – no interference so she can't tell us what to do or give us ideas we have to come up with them by ourselves so it's really hard for her um, and I know that we've learned through doing it ourselves to kind of guide um, the team members in the right direction without specifically telling them exactly what to do because oh, you really yeah. want them to be able to come up with the solutions on their own and be able to kind of create their own um, thing by themselves that yeah. was their idea. It's very difficult for her because I mean there are times when it's like 
our time management isn't the best and she can't say anything. She can't tell us like, well, you have to work on this now, otherwise you're not gonna get it done in time. So like, she's, it's hard for her cause she's seen it all fall apart. <laughs> like, she's oh, just, yes. it, wow. there have been years where it's like, luckily this year for our last year was our best year that we've ever worked together because we worked from last year's experience um, where it was just junior year, it's, it's tough. Um, and you know, we were all focusing on like prom and like, you know, yeah. getting it's our grades testing up, so and testing. And, yeah. and so, yeah. you know, time College. management, it yeah. really wasn't as good as it should have been. Yeah. So we failed. Yeah. We yeah. really bad last year. Um, awesome. Hey, hey, we got second. We got yeah. second out of two teams. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we learned from that. And now luckily this year for our last year, we made it. Yeah. And we finally have the yeah. opportunity to go to that global finals. Great. Yeah. Opportunities to fail. That's that is awesome. Exactly. Yes. We learned from our mistakes. Great. So I'd like to take a second because I've been involved with DI for many years. And Mrs. Holly was actually my son's manager also on his little kid team. So if you think she, you guys drove them crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think she quit after Colby's team or after Chris's oh, yeah. team. Yeah, she did. Um, um, but I want to point out, and I hope you guys don't mind talking about it, they actually, this team actually won some awards at the regional tournament for their sportsmanship and for helping other teams and for having such great, so oh, I know you're very modest, but nice. there were many awards where you guys were getting up from your ground and walking up to get an award. So it was more than just your your um, project and your, your, cha your challenging or instant challenge, but you, I mean, they went above and beyond to, to help other teams really. and things, so. Yeah, so I think that's really, really cool. And there was the Tooth Fairy. Like, they, their costumes were really interesting, too. Like, they had this whole skit going with. Yeah. It was, it's a really neat organization. So thank you to Raman for, for, for guiding us every year because it's, it's invaluable. It's a re really great experience. So yeah. congratulations and have fun in, in Knoxville. We went a few years ago when my daughter was littler at that time. But they have a really cool um, pool with a high dive. <laughs> spend, spend some time at the high dive. But go see all the other teams because the teams that are there, oh my gosh, it's amazing to watch. So mm -hmm. good luck and have a nice trip. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, thank, thank you. Congratulations. you. Thank you for having us. No, thank you for thank coming. You. Good luck for us. Do we have anything else for recognitions tonight? Just, okay. Nothing. Okay. Um, so I have one recognition tonight um, on behalf of the school committee. Um, we have had somebody, at least for the three years I've been on the committee, have been guiding us and certainly guiding me through every kind of financial issue we could have come up with. So Ralph, the school committee decided that we are recognizing you during this meeting because it's my and Kelly last meeting. Um, and so we got you a little something for your retirement. Oh, thank you. And wanted to wish you well and also just because it is our last meeting thank you so much so um you have to open it on camera <laughs> <laughs> we are forcing me it to won't embarrass that. you right yeah. No. No. Uh, nothing will pop out. <laughs> <laughs> no it wasn't a trick <laughs> ball or anything yes. a can or um but thank you for everything you've done thank i you. don't I believe it's a clock that. either like not a, a not a retirement retirement clock? i mean yeah. countdown well, let's see I need a little kid there to help me with the paper. Uh -huh. You have some <laughs> engineers right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Little calculator. Yeah. <laughs> with you, a pen. You gotta read what it says. What? The inscription. Oh. The one and only Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> School Committee 2017. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Thank you. They got, they got your full name on there too, Ralph. I on the pen it is, yeah. Oh, so I thought the yeah. one and only Ralph. So if, you, if anyone steals it, you'll be able to recover it because. Did you put tell. a chip in it? <laughs> no, I didn't put a chip in it. <laughs> I've got a low jack in the pen. <laughs> low jack I have pen. a uh, magnifying glass in my desk uh, for the purposes of seeing little. Well, there you go. Yeah, it's hard in this light, too. I wouldn't have. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. One and all. Yes, thank you. Um, and in that vein, we, uh, on behalf of the school committee, we would also like to recognize the contribution <laughs> of Lori and Kelly. Um, over the past three years, as I was thinking about coming to this meeting tonight, I was thinking about all of the things that we have done together um, and the many hours that we've spent not only at this table, 
but the hours of preparing that go on in between meetings. Um, and so on behalf of the school committee, I would like to present you with Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And you should also open it. Oh, boy. I know. Now I'm like going to be a change for this. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, I, I can't read this all here because then it will make me upset. <laughs> Do it at the same time. So How you? Oh, my gosh. Each other be surprised. Yay. I have none of this. Yay. Swag. <laughs> I feel so like much. you don't get like cool sweatshirts here because oh, they're in high awesome. school. So this so is now like, there you go. You, so you can you. show up and look cool. Yes, like, and right. let me tell you how cold it's been lately. I right, you might wear it tonight. But you Thank can you much. definitely exchange, or you know. But we hope you love it. Thank, Thank you very you. much. That's right. That when you come for public oh. comment. So I plan on coming to every public comment and harassing you. Excellent. <laughs> we will be holding comment? you to the three yes, minute actually. limit. <laughs> <laughs> and right on time, it is actually our first opportunity for public comment. Perfect. Is anyone here for public comment tonight? All right. Within we can move right on to reports to the school committee. And our first step is student council. If you guys would like to join us. And I'm sorry I don't know your name, so why don't you introduce yourselves when you get up there? Okay, sure. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank you for having us. Um, my name's Celia Potis. Uh, I'm a sophomore at Hopkinton High School. Oh, welcome. And I'm Emma Edwards, and I'm also a sophomore at Hopkinton High School. Okay. Oh, yay. Welcome, guys. Thank you. We're the both members of the Student Council. Thank you for having us today. <laughs> Great. Um, so I am here just to talk about the finishing of AP exams. I know a lot of students are proud and happy that they are over for the year. <laughs> um, and also, Celia is going to talk about her trip that she went on. Yes, so I just went on the trip to Europe with about 50 other students and four staff members. Um, we went to Paris, Amsterdam, and Brussels, and it was probably the best week of my life. I know I went with Grace, Nancy's daughter, and it was one of the best experiences of my life. Um, we went to so many different places, and every day was something new, and I learned so much, and I every day it was a new experience with new people and a new thing to look forward to, and uh, I miss it so much, and it <laughs> flew by in a, in a wink of an eye. And I just want to say, if anyone has a chance to go on a school trip, they should definitely take it because it was one of the best opportunities that I've ever had in this high school. Um, on a, like, not as a light note, it's not, <laughs> not MCAS is coming up on Tuesday <laughs> and Wednesday. For <laughs> sophomores. Still as fun, still as fun. Um, <laughs> as well as the Grand March and Prom tomorrow, which I know it's really exciting for a lot of students that are going and watching. Um, it's just a fun time at the high school to be around. Um, next Thursday is that psych field trip for seniors, which I know the majority of the senior class is going to Harvard Square and participating in that, so that's an exciting thing for seniors. Yeah, and it's a great way to end off the year because their year is coming to a quick end, and uh, they only have a couple more events happening, and I think this is just a good way to unify them all and have like a fun end of the year and something to look forward to for everyone, especially with all these tests coming up and all the AP exams and finals and everything, so that's one thing that if I was a senior I would look forward to, so I know a lot of people are really excited for that. Um, also, we're having the art show on next Thursday too, oh. and we have like the one act shows for drama. Um, I know a lot of students are really excited for the art show because they have a variety of different pieces in there, and all the people in the art program here at the Hopkinton High School, they're so excited to see their pieces on display. and. Uh, get recognized for all their hard work and creativity and I know I'm really excited to see my stuff in it and along with uh, students in all different grades here so it should be a fun night and everyone's getting ready by choosing their pieces and picking their best art pieces and just celebrating art which I love so that's one of the things I'm really looking forward to. And then next Friday, May 19th, um, the underclassmen awards are going to be given to freshmen and sophomores, um, as well as Relay for Life, which I feel like I've done it for years, and it's just so fun. It's one of the things that you would do with your friends, but you're doing it for such a good cause that it really involves the whole community, and I, I look forward to it. Yeah, it's one night everyone looks forward to, whether you're super young or 
in college or still in high school, even parents look forward to this event. Uh, it's always so lighthearted and the environment is so positive and even if uh, we do have a serious event at uh, Relay for Life, everyone still works together and they all, the whole uh, aspect of Relay for Life is everyone really takes it into their, into like heart and uh, they try to put their best effort into it and they spend all this time raising money and getting the word out for the uh, the actual night and they spent all day setting up for it and I know it's one event that a lot of people are really excited for this year. Thank so. you. Oh, thank you guys. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for having us. Very much uh, to meet you, I hope that you'll be back next year. Is yes. that a conversation yeah, you've had? Too. Too. Is, <laughs> out is, is this like a preview <laughs> of like things yeah, to so, come? <laughs> uh, they wanted some underclassmen to give like the speech tonight because oh. I know most upperclassmen do it and I just want to guess have a feel oh. for what it's going to be like. So Well, you did a great <coughs> job. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Now you the ice thank you. Know you. It's not too scary. Yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you Thanks, for having me. Nice to see you guys. Um, so next up is Mr. Bishop to talk to us about the Yo European Summer Trip Travel Advisory. And there's some information in front of you. Okay. Thanks for being here, Evan. Yes, good evening, everyone. Thanks for having <laughs> no me. Kidding. I'm so glad you're here. Did you say you had your magnifying glass? I know. <laughs> I know that is really small print. I apologize. Really, we're older. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I'm here to talk a little bit about um, the travel alert that was just uh, put up by the U.S. State Department and how that might affect uh, our, our travel plans for this summer. We do have um, nine students and two chaperones attending the Food Summit, uh, which is taking place mostly in northern Italy, but also in Germany. Uh, and so in your packet, uh, we, we kind of put together a little bit of um, some information about EF, um, you know, when it comes to a travel alert like this. Um, in, in a travel alert, it's... They're not telling you you can't travel. They're just telling you you have to travel with caution. Um, we Once the alert came, I actually spoke with Charlotte Shire, our, our lead chaperone on the trip. She emailed me right away, and she said she was going to put together a letter, send it to the parents, uh, and talk to the kids about how they're feeling. Um, so that's part of the packet that you have is the letter that we wrote to parents, kind of explaining what EF um, does for us in these types of situations. Talks a little bit about the policy if we wanted to back out of the trip uh, you have 45 days to do so when there's a travel alert or a travel, a travel warning that's put uh, on a, a country that you're going to um, the unique thing about this trip is it's not just Hopkinton students going somewhere it's a summit there's hundreds of schools from around the world that are attending and um, from all accounts everybody is still planning on going to uh, the summit and so uh, we would uh, like to continue to go as well um, we talked to the kids they all want to go the parents had a few questions but for the most part all wanted to go as well so um, the 45-day window, actually, it's next Thursday was when the day we'd have to back out if we wanted to. But that's not something that we are inclined to do. I think if parents and students want to make that decision, they certainly can. They have the right to do so. Um, you know, it, because there's a travel alert, they'd be able to, to, to pull out of that trip without much penalty, uh, besides maybe the $95 deposit they put down earlier. So um, NEF is, is great with that, that process as well. So um, I'd be happy to answer any questions about uh, the trip or, or the alert or any concerns that you may have about the process? Is it will the alert alter any of the specifics of the trip in particular, or is it just? No, it won't. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and so there, the trip, um, it, it like I said, it takes place mostly in uh, northern Italy in some rural areas, and so there's not going to be a lot of uh, time spent in, in in bigger cities. There will be some time, and um, I believe uh, I think I have one one second. I don't want to the countries that they'll be in. I believe they land in they land in Munich. They'll spend some time in Venice and Milan, but very short periods of time. For the most part, it'll be in, in rural areas, so it's not a, a densely populated area where they'll be during most of the, the time that they're there. But they don't plan on changing any of the, the criteria, at least yet, at least all the word that we've received. And if anything does change, we'll, we'll certainly cycle back to you guys about it. Did you have a question? No, I just thank you. It's, it was reassuring to know, especially to hear that the other schools are still attending, and and you know the distinction between alert and warning was helpful to understand because you know we all hear the same things on the news and it's disconcerting. But sure. um, but you know I know this is the company that we always use that we have ultimate confidence in, and 
uh, you know, ultimately it's up to the parents, but I think, you know, I, I applaud you clearly. <laughs> the programs make a great impact on the kids because yeah, I know that wasn't clear, a plan. Yeah, I did. I was like, oh, that, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I know that. <laughs> did not plant that. No, I know. I know that's been said You know what order we were going in. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, thanks for the update. Yeah. It's nice to know that EF actually reached out proactively to you and yeah, didn't just wait yeah. and see if you read the paperwork. No, they're, they're excellent. They're a great group to work with. And both chaperones, uh, Ms. Shire uh, and Ms. Von Bosenbring, who is our drama teacher, have both been on many trips with our students. So they're very experienced chaperones. Uh, I have a great relationship with them. We'll be communicating throughout the trip. Um, so I feel confident that the kids are in good hands and in good hands with EF as well. Well, and even, that, even though it's over the summer, I know that's great that they're all still – all in contact, and they handled the incident in Paris mm -hmm. really yeah, well. Yeah, um, I, I actually, because as Celia was saying, mm -hmm. Grace was on that yeah. trip, yeah. and I actually had a text from Grace before I had heard in the news that the chaperones were excellent in making sure the kids had communicated. And they did a great, they did a wonderful job. They did a wonderful well job. Managed. Yeah, and they and they communicated with me as well before it, it hit the news. So I I, I was almost kind of like, what's going on over there? You know. And then I turned on the TV, and um, but again, it was almost 50 kids. 40, 40 wonderful chaperones, and they were around that area of the incident probably about an hour and a half before that, which is which is frightening. But they, they, they did handle the situation very well, um, communicated to parents, and everybody was safe. And, and the kids, you know, besides that one blip, really, really, as you could hear from the students, enjoyed the trip. Phenomenal trip. Yeah. yeah. Great. All right. Thank you. Yeah, cool. um, yeah. I don't have any additional questions for anyone else. No. We appreciate you coming and yeah, giving us the update. Yeah. And calming anyone's concerns and in addition being able to give that out to the public so that they can ask those same questions and know where to go. So. Okay. And if anything does change, uh, I'll, I'll certainly uh, come back and, and answer any questions or at least give you updates if, if things do come my way. Awesome. Thank Great. you. Awesome. Thank you. I just want to take a second to say, you know, thank you so much for all your service. The two of you have done a wonderful job on, on the school committee. I've really enjoyed working with you um, and it's going to be tough shoes to fill, but um, I wish you the best. and. Hopefully you still. I know you're coming to the high school I'm next year, so we'll see you. Hopefully, a bunch of each other. I get you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. 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 But yeah. But it's been a pleasure, and I just it, it's not an easy job. Uh, thankless in a lot of times, but I just appreciate your hard work, and as well, do the teachers. I mean, and, and no one knows thankless more than a high school principal. So. <laughs> um, but I certainly hope that you're here when my kids are in high school. So I'm just putting that plug in. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Talk to that side of the table. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, thank you. All right. Thank you very Thanks, much. Have a good night. Um, See you tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, and we even got you out of here early. <laughs> oh, oiled machine. Yeah, you keep saying that. Early. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. We will be there. I've never attended. I'm really oh, fun. oh, fun. you have to bring your girl. Oh, bring the girls. Yeah. Parents done that before. I'm assuming at this point that softball's going to be rained out, so maybe I will. Um, Is it going to rain tomorrow? I it was Friday, Saturday. it's going to rain I don't tomorrow. know. It's supposed to rain every day. <laughs> every Saturday. Every, every week. Yeah. So we do have liaison reports. Um, did anyone have any updates since we've last met? Because I know our last meeting was actually in April. A while ago. Early, before vacation. So, um, I, I guess just quickly from the athletic field subcommittee, um, we are starting, we did meet with the designer um, which we all approved at our last meeting. And so uh, we, we have a schedule from her, and we have a list of, um, what is the word that I'm looking for? A list to review of pieces that we would like to have included in the project, f everything from like a backstop to a scoreboard to bleachers. And like all. your criteria kind of thing? Um, Sort criteria of requirements materials like accessories to yes. the field uh, basically but, <laughs> but including like <laughs> field size so that's what we're currently reviewing and that's going to be sent out to coaches as well as um, presidents of all of the local youth sports organizations so that we can get that information to Gail and then they will come and meet with um, the subcommittee in June and we'll really get rolling but shortly um, we will get our Facebook page and our website page and our Twitter account up and running and live and so we've been working on the project timeline so that we can put that up there as well as um, some talking points or fast facts whatever you want to call it about what the need is and what the process has been to date and so obviously that will include some pub public forums in the fall and prior to um, to town meeting as well as obviously some presentations to the school committee <laughs> in there too so um, so yeah so things are still contrary to to rumors in the community things are still moving along um, 
expeditiously, and I, I, I think we're really starting to gain momentum. It's very exciting. The Youth Commission met this week and working towards a multicultural day on June the 17th, I believe. So. Same day as Timlin. It is. Ooh. It's going to be in the afternoon, uh, and it's going to be on the town common. But. So we can just move. So you just the, keep running. You can run. From the high keep school running. To, yeah. Um, elementary School Building Committee, um, we have our next meeting on uh, next Wednesday, the 17th. Um, but the sort of the, I think the big news is the exterior construction, as anybody who drives by can see, um, is continuing. Um, next Friday, they will be hoisting uh, the topping off beam, which, as people know, may know at this point, is the essentially the highest beam in the building. Yeah, I um, wanted to ask about that. How come the school committee didn't get the assignment? So you can. I did. When? What, wow, so you didn't even tell the rest. Sorry. Of Finish. All right, interrupting. <laughs> Um, I got a picture of my son signing it, so I. <laughs> so the the uh, the beams were at center school for yeah. all of the the students and staff at center school to be able to sign. Um, for members of the elementary school building committee and the school committee, um, you know, for however long you're there, um, will be able to sign the beams. They are actually at the construction site, so you can go um, to the trailer. I think it's between seven eleven three. or seven and three. And sign the beam. On what um, at, well, before Friday, May nineteenth, because otherwise you're not going to be able to reach it. Then it will uh, be way over right. your head. <laughs> be you have very to go on high. The crane. Um, exactly. And so, um, once that's done, they're continuing the next stages, the exterior construction. Um, they're starting to put in the, the some of the ground, the, the block that goes on the ground of the exterior, and that'll be followed by the window and, and metal panels. So it'll really you know, start to quickly look like a building, not just a frame. So it's very, I know it's enjoyable every time I drive by to just start to see it become a reality, so. I know, I'm missing the sign. They had a sign up during Marathon, like the future home of Marathon Elementary. And like, I feel like as quickly as it went up, they took it down. Yeah. And I was like, why is that down? Because it was so, like I why stopped in the middle of Hayden Row oh, and didn't took a picture. <laughs> There was no other cars around. Your own <laughs> personal <laughs> traffic coming. I wanted a picture limit. of it because it went. I watched the guy putting the post in the one day, and then the next day it was up. And then right after the marathon, they took it down. So I don't know if it was like <laughs> maybe the PAA put it. <laughs> maybe they didn't get Jim. this. Maybe they didn't take <laughs> it and get the approval of the board of selectmen. Maybe on the sign bylaw. Look at Mr. Kildoff's garage. No, no, I didn't see a typo. <laughs> so anyway, so, yes. sorry. Only our parking. No, that's okay. Did you have any more liaison reports? Well, I went, I went to the last ESBC meeting. I think it was the same night as the Know Your Vote. So the, most of the talking was just about steel and how they're progressing and, and utilities and things. So they're really just it's building a, a building oiled machine. Yeah, <laughs> they've got a lot. They've got a lot to, to manage there, but it's going very well. So, yeah. Great. Um, so my, my typical liaison report about CPAC is really just going to be a reminder that the entire school committee was invited to Tuesday the 16th meeting at 7 p.m. here in the high school library. Um, I will be coming even though that will be my first day as non-school committee member um, just to kind of pass the baton and give them some comfort that I don't I don't know I, I offered to come so I'm, I'm going um, and then Otherwise, I think all of my other liaison roles have finished with town meeting because it was all in relation to the Board of Selectmen. And obviously, we were all there, and all of our um, asks were met. So it was a, a very good town meeting and surprising at the little discussion there was over the money articles versus the non-money articles. But anyone that watched would have known that already. So so that's it for... I just remembered I had another one. Sure. Um, so I the Marathon Fund Committee um, met last week um, to do the um, awarding of scholarships from the Marathon Fund. So the, the Marathon Fund Committee gives um, six total um, scholarships to graduating seniors who apply. Um, it's three uh, male recipients and three female recipients. And um, the, the, the criteria for the application is that they have to have participated in athletics in some way, athletics or extracurricular activities, um, and provide a short essay that talks about the impact that it had on their school experience. Um, it was really, really hard. There were, I think, there were over, I think there were almost 60 total applicants. Um, 
so we, as a committee, read, had to read through them all, and um, it, it, again, it was, as, as you would expect, as we've come to expect from our high school students, they were all of incredible quality, had great stories, and to narrow it down to six was, was right. extremely difficult, but um, it was another one of those experiences where, um, you know, there's certainly a lot of things we do in this job that aren't that much fun <laughs> that was uh, enjoyable to be able to, to be a part of, of that for those students. So. Jamie didn't mention that the town charter got its vote. Well, so we that's happening on Monday. Monday. But they got the, didn't they get approval no, that, at the? No, that was oh, at the special, special town, town meeting. meeting. Yeah, but thank you for the reminder that everyone should everyone vote for should that on Monday. On Monday. Right. Yeah. If we're talking about town meeting, I just did want to throw out that I had a lot of people that approached me to say how much they enjoyed the presentation on the school budget, that they really liked the way it was done this year relative mm -hmm. to. Awesome. Good. Excellent. Thank you. It wasn't just about the numbers this year. They like that. Yeah. Particularly people Good. who don't have children in the district. Right. So Good. They enjoy getting a Thank you. full picture. Super. Great. Um, so in my last chair report, I have a couple of um, housekeeping things just to – I did send out an email to everyone that was remaining on the committee um, about the payroll. And I know we can't discuss it because of open meeting law, but I just want, I had let Michelle, the payroll um, person, know that um, after Tuesday that it, she couldn't contact me. And so she'll be in touch with all three of you, being that there is no chair until the 25th. Um, but obviously, you've all been on the committee for a while, so you'll know what to do. Um, I, I think we also have to remember to put like an out of office on our emails. I was wondering what happens with those accounts. They shut them down eventually, they? but I think we should just put like your shokes okay. here. That's a good idea. What happens to How those accounts? How long do the yeah. school committee accounts stay active? Should we put it? Until a shoke turns them off. <laughs> 12.01 <laughs> Monday. <Yeah. laughs> when they walk out of here tonight. Yeah, usually. Oh, no, but we're still no, officially no, on the no, committee no, on Monday. Kidding. Midnight 01. Oh, I don't have anything personal in there. I just likely will put like my out of office on it as yeah, of Monday, just saying idea. to contact the other members. Um, or the generic. Can, yeah, or the generic yeah, okay. email address. Okay. Um, the, yeah, so we did a town meeting recap. I couldn't think of anything else that was um, chair required in the, in the interim that you'll need. I did um, work with Dr. McLeod on the agenda for the 25th. Um, it's a much lighter agenda than this one, so mm -hmm. that'll be good. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and then also I just wanted to um, just to thank you all for your patience, especially in the first year when it's really hard to figure out what you're doing here, and, um, and just for the opportunity to work with such great and knowledgeable people that even though we didn't always agree, which I think is perfectly fine and actually necessary, um, I always – really respected everybody's opinion and and felt respected as well so thank you very much and if you it, you don't have to say anything but you know yeah. no <laughs> yeah. same thing yeah it's been great working with you guys it's been really fun even <laughs> you said, educational I remember fun. you saying that to me when you were running that it seems like we don't have any fun I so did we had, say we that. Did have some I said fun. I've come to some meetings Jean and everyone <laughs> just looks so sad all the time and she's like what I know so what we tried mean? to spice it up spice it up <laughs> I think we did. brought some lightheartedness to the board right. we well, can have fun too <laughs> yeah, it's been good well been I, good I do think that as a board goes that our board is very respected in the community and um and so I, I appreciate that we had the opportunity to be a part of it. So thank you very much. And I will, I, as much as people keep asking me and looking at me like I'm crazy, I actually will miss it. I won't miss chair, but I will miss the, the committee itself and um, the education that I've gotten on public education because I certainly never had appreciation for what goes on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And um, I always had an appreciation for teachers, but I don't think I had an appreciation for the pressures that – go on with government and on schools so and it certainly makes me incredibly proud to be in a town that is so successful so um when I think back to why I ran and I think I've accomplished everything that I kind of wanted to do and you know getting in that education you're now that neither of us are going to be I feel like I'm kind of I can be a voice out in the community without being on this board still mm -hmm. you know building on everything we learned here True. so it's 
it's really, it's been a great experience. So thank you very much for being patient with us as lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> graduate to the comfy chairs. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we could sit or the comfy the couch time. and watch it from home. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, so we can move on to the superintendent's report, which we have important stuff to talk about tonight, Dr. McLeod. <laughs> Okay, so um, I will provide a brief overview. This is a little bit different this year because this is the first year that we've had a two-year evaluation cycle um, because it's my fourth year. So um, this is really um, just for the benefit of the public. What we typically would have done mid-year, which would have been January, um, which is a discussion about my goals primarily, um, and the purpose of it is to solicit feedback from the school committee. Um, to the superintendent, in this case me, um, about how I'm progressing towards my goals, things that you'd like to see more of a focus on, perhaps changes or tweaks to goals, um, or any other suggestions or feedback that you would like to give me. One of the things that in the past, you know, I've asked for is, you know, sometimes you hear things out in the community that I don't hear, um, and that can help me with goal setting, not only you know, as we do with our teachers and the rest of the administrative team, we spend time in the summer looking at our goals and looking to see if there, you know, maybe there's some that have already been achieved. And this is one that, you, you know, really either you can spend less time focusing on or maybe you check the box and say this one's been met and, uh, you know, we need to move on from it. So with just that general overview, uh, the first goal was ensuring high expectations for student success are evident at all grade levels. And I want to point out again for the benefit of anybody who's watching um, is that the goals have been set up to be aligned with not only the strategic plan but also with DESE's um, superintendent's rubric. So when we look at it, and this will be provided publicly following tonight's meeting, um, we have the standards. Uh, in this case, uh, this goal is aligned with instruction and professional culture. Um, and then the strategic objective from your, st your strategic plan, which is effective instruction, specifically communicating high expectations for all students and implementing evidence-based high-quality instructional practices. Um, the evidence that I've provided uh, for, for you to consider um, is, is really around attending school-based professional learning communities, building-based meetings, uh, data meetings. There are elementary leadership meetings, um, in addition to classroom walkthroughs that have taken place with principals where we can go through with a common goal of what we're looking for and then have an opportunity to go back and discuss. We're not looking to evaluate anybody. It's just a snapshot of what we're seeing. Um, but those opportunities to be in kind of a fly in the wall, and that's really what they're like and they've become um, for anybody from any of us from central office who are in that role. Uh, teachers have become very used to having us there. And the point is to be able to walk into a, a, a common discussion happening about student work or data and for the conversation to continue. Um, you know, typically I sit just, just behind, you know, the group because I, I don't want to be a distraction, but provides a window into the, the real work that's taking place with teachers and an opportunity to follow up either through admin council for a broader discussion um, or back at central office, either at, at a central office meeting or our learning design team work, which we're going to speak about again uh, some more tonight when we talk to you about the strategic plan, we meaning Carol and I. Um, so with that said, this continues to be the biggest challenge for any of us, for, for principals, uh, for Carol, for me, because when we put time on our calendars to visit buildings, it's the first thing to go. It's the first thing to go because it's scheduled in the way that it is typically unannounced. Um, when unexpected issues arise, um, that's the open piece on my calendar that is so easy to go. So it's something that I continue to struggle with um, as far as making that a priority, and uh, I don't know a solution. Um, except to maybe put more building visit time on my calendar as placeholders. Um, typically this year I had it in on Mondays and Thursdays, Monday mornings and Thursday afternoons. Um, so I just wanted to, to say that, that that is a challenge uh, in for any of the unexpected things that happen in any given week. Do you want me to want to go through this by goal? Yeah, I think okay. that would be easy. Great. I do. Sure. Yeah. I don't know if there's a Great. 
So any feedback on that goal? And oh, in addition, just again for people watching, the school committee have provided been provided with evidence folders for each of the goals as well as um, survey results from a survey that I um, put out to my administrative team. Um, so that's additional evidence besides just what I'm telling you. <laughs> so um, yeah, that'd be great to have feedback as we go. I might even type. Can I start? Sure. I, so the evidence folder was really helpful, but I have to say that reading the survey was really helpful for me yeah, yeah. Um, because as a non-educator, you know, I know you're presenting evidence that means probably more to the people sitting on that side of the table than it does to me just in terms of my ability to evaluate what it says. So the what, what was just fantastic, and I applaud you for doing it, was um, – the survey and the feedback that, that was collected through the survey because then it was really evident to me the impact of your goals on the entire administrative team. There was a clear focus and reference in every goal area, particularly this one, to the strategic plan, which we all worked so hard on. And as I stopped to think about it, um, you know, it really struck me that we did that strategic plan in your first year here. And we really haven't had to change it or drop something or add something or we forgot this or that was a mistake or whatever. So I, I just was struck by that this year as I was going through the evidence, maybe because I didn't have to check out 87 stupid boxes and there wasn't the rubric um, driving all of it. I just was really struck by how thoughtful a job you did setting all of that up four years ago, how the results that we're seeing that we're presenting at town meeting, you know, the change in level of um, schools and test results. I, I just, and I just, I think the, the comprehensive across the board, consistent focus and comment on using the data and um, just all of that. I, I can just, this time it just really struck me more than it has in the past about all of those pieces really coming together. So, um, and that was particularly true for this school, but in, in, in particular, it was the survey that kind of really hit that home for me. So thank you. I don't really have a, a suggestion or a critique about this particular one. I think maybe in the summer when we talk more generally about next year, I would be interested to hear at that point from you about your what you think in looking at your goals, if you think there need to be changes or tweaks okay. or whatever. Um, but I, I thought... The evidence was excellent for this, so thank you. Okay. I'm just typing as you speak, so that that's great feedback. Thank you. Nancy, do you want to go next? Or do you? Well, I, I would echo that it, I, I don't have the comparison to make, so I don't have maybe as detailed a comment, but I would agree that the looking at the evidence there is much easier for me than trying to look at something more abstract. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I echo, echo the helpfulness of the survey because um, this is a goal in which I would say I actually think in your evidence summary I think you don't give yourself enough credit. Um, the I can understand how the building visits are a challenge and the first thing to fall off but what I read in the survey validated what I've observed which is we've talked since we had the strategic plan about the alignment of the strategic plan um, and what's clear from the survey responses is we don't have strategic alignment from the strategic plan to your goals. We have strategic alignment from the strategic plan through the district. Mm -hmm. um, teachers echoed that they felt the expectations were clear, that um, you know there were several instances of the modeling that you do, maybe not necessarily in the buildings as much as you want, but there are many, many different ways to provide that, um, to provide that kind of modeling. And it's very clear, I think, from, from that evidence that um, what we've probably observed from the 30,000-foot level is really what's happening, mm -hmm. um, and we see the results of that. So um, I, I think those expectations are accomplished through that alignment, and I think that's something that you do a, a, an excellent job of. Thank you. Great. I think I would just be redundant at this okay. point. Okay. Thank so. you. I have some more general comments, but I'm going to okay. read on them. Thank you. Um, yeah, this this particular initiative, I I don't you know I don't have any. I didn't have any concerns from the evidence that you provided. I, I mean, I honestly feel like 
all of the successes that you've been able that you were able to present at town meeting are indicative of the success of this particular initiative. Mm. Um, what's interesting to me was you opening with a challenge that you're having in visiting the schools and what I didn't get from the survey was anyone feeling neglected. Um, <laughs> True. And, and so while I understand that is important to you and, and that feels like a failure of sorts, um, I, <laughs> I do think that the amount of crazy things that come up in your week that you're not prepared for. I mean, for instance, town hall flooding mm -hmm. put a ton of work on you, which pe many people don't realize. But the, the, one of the first phone calls Norman got, and he said this to me specifically, it was from Dr. McLeod offering the help of the schools, which meant the schools had to look at their schedules and see where they could help out town hall. That that isn't in any of your goals. So yet you're spending a lot of time doing some of these um, outside the box things and and necessarily so to help the town continue to flourish. But at the same time, like if that takes away from the building walk that you had planned, then I understand that because any of us sitting there next to you had that call come in with us there would have said, yeah, of course you can't, you know, you need to take care of this. So, um, and I, I don't see you absent from any emergent issues that happen in the buildings either. You're there. And so for me, your absence in those circumstances would be more concerning than missing some scheduled um, times that you had planned for the buildings. I, I, I see how your administrative team reacts to you and, um, and tries to emulate you and your professionalism. And so I feel like if you weren't present for them, that wouldn't be visible either. So for me, it's seeing your interactions with the administrative team that's more evidentiary support than necessarily what you had in the folder. Um, and certainly, you can try and come up with more ways to fit in those unannounced visits to, to, to see things. But I think as the years have gone by, you've been able to build a stronger and stronger team underneath you that will allow to free up more time for you to fit those Definitely. In. And yep. you haven't, you didn't have that the first few years. And so you had to build up to that and that takes time. And so, so maybe next year is the year yeah. that that becomes a success story for you. Right. But yeah. um, I agree with John's choice of words of don't sell yourself short and the accomplishments because I think it's, they're very indicative in non-documentary ways. So thank you. Okay, so now that you've kind of gone that direction, I do have <laughs> comments that are directly related to that because what I took away from the survey, and I agree that was it was a fabulous survey, and I wanted to be sure we could talk about it tonight. Was I, I wrote that too? Like now that I wrote, now that the admin team is strong, stable, and high functioning, you have a chance to really shine where your strengths are, which I really feel like is the community engagement and the advocacy for the district and everything like that. So I I saw a lot in the survey that lent itself to the same things that I think everyone else has been saying where you know people feel supported they feel listened to they feel like you're a confidant sometimes a boss other times like that you can do you can have that multiple roles and people don't just see you as one thing that they're really willing to talk to you and you know work through problems they don't feel like you're just going to be you know like figure it out you know I'm the boss you know so I I, I that's mm. based on that I hadn't really thought it about it that way before, but I think that it makes me excited to think about those yeah. opportunities because everything you said is true in terms of the team, our team, um, and those opportunities that will give me more more time to get into the buildings and do those things that I love most. Well, so, I, was in a, yeah. I was in a meeting at work this week, and it just came to mind that we have a couple of, I'm in software, and a couple of the software projects just haven't really been doing very exciting things. And the guy in this meeting this week said, we've eaten our vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> now we get to have dessert. So oh. maybe next year is your dessert year. Like Yay. You've, done, you've, you've eaten enough vegetables, and now you can, okay. you know. That's, I like that. So. <laughs> the comments also were so positive. Too. They were. It they, they wasn't that just was a lovely. survey that was giving good, <clears throat> hard evidence of, what a great job you're doing, but really heartfelt. Mm -hmm. in, in you could see how supported they felt. You could see how empowered they felt in their own roles. And that yeah. you could see that they felt 
that you're going over and above what they might have expected in some of the specific things that you've done. Thank you, Nancy. I also felt that they were really reflective, which I was Perfect. excited. I was excited to read because it's something we've all been working on as a team in terms of being able to provide honest and reflective feedback that we can all improve. Um, and, and there were some particularly that called that out. Like, we can tell, I can tell that you're working at this because of that, right? And I thought that that's really, really good and honest feedback. It struck me as very authentic. Authentic, yep. Just some of the particular talking about looking at the, the walking club and looking at things that oh, you've mm -hmm. done yeah. with the, to try to look at the whole person of your admin team and looking oh. at thank you yeah. I thought it was particularly powerful just to what you just alluded to but comments about uh, observations about um, changes that you have made and reflections that you have done yourself which a I was um, I was pleased that they had they felt comfortable in remarking on that in the first place because I don't think that's true in every um, workplace and B I thought you know once again I know how conscious you are of modeling the behavior that you are looking for or the the practice or the approach that you are looking for for people and I it just struck me and it's something that uh, what they focused on particularly is something that I've noticed as well so First of all, it's not just for show for the people at this table. It's you, you. You definitely walk the walk, and it's been. It's not lost on us, but it's a great example to the people that work with you. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, and I, I just think that's a very important leadership characteristic, and that's something that you really excel at. Um, so I was very pleased to see that that was that had gone unnoticed by the people that you work with, but um, certainly think it's important to call out. Here too. Great. Yeah. So I, I know we have limited time for you. Oh, sorry. Should I go <laughs> on to the next pool? Yeah, I just want to make sure. So I forgot. Do you have four or five? Four. Four. Okay. Yeah. And I think some of the feedback will be the same, and you know, don't feel like you need to. Um, so ensure that assessment data, goal two was ensure that assessment data is used effectively to plan differentiated and targeted instruction. And so our big, big rock is adjustment to practice. It's been the big rock for three years. It will continue to be the big, big rock. We have done a tremendous amount of work around this year um, with the entire team, the building, building some common understanding about what that means and some trust around the support and that it's not a, you know, gotcha or, you know, it's not an evaluative tool. It's about focusing on learning, and that that's a change um, in, in terms of, you know, that because we think about focusing on teaching and instruction. Um, and what we are, as a district, really looking at is, but what if that wonderful instruction that we know that you're providing and all of the talent that our team, our teaching team, our instructional team, our educators bring to the table, what if it doesn't work? Mm -hmm. What if the student is either plateaued and not continuing to grow for that reason or just stuck and can't get past a gap in their learning what then and so this will continue to be a goal it's called out in our strategic plan um, it's certainly at, within the rubric for not only superintendents but also administrators and teachers um, you will this will continue to be a priority and you'll hear more about it in the strategic plan um, I feel really good about the work that we've done with John Doria. Um, in my uh, overview, I've provided some, I think, really compelling comments from people that show how deeply they're thinking about this work um, and how challenging it is. Um, John, I know that you were in my office one day and you noted the book Switch. Um, and, you know, is really a book that is not a book necessarily for educators, but it talks about how can we, how can we simplify the path so that we can move this elephant, which is, you know, the emotional side of things, along the path. And um, there's just been a lot of our time at Admin Council, and, you know, that, that's all of us, Ashok is here, and Ralph, and, and Carol, um, working together across buildings and across the district to see what are the supports, what's the professional development that needs to be in place. Um, and that's why I shared those quotes, because I feel like, 
it gives you just a, a snippet and to me the most important piece about how the work that happens at admin council goes back to the buildings um, and so it continues to be you know I think in the folders it's harder to give um, hard evidence on that because it ends up being some data that you look at and it doesn't really mean anything mm -hmm. um, but the data is really there to show you that we are gathering multiple sources of information and that's those spreadsheets that show you how much information there is on any individual student for whom there is concern and how that data is being used in PLCs um, under Carol's guidance to really help us make make changes and, and adjust instructional practices for individual students. So don't that the quick in, overview on that one, but I just wanted to stress that I'm happy where we are. Um, it continues to be the most central, and I believe um, you will see it in the school improvement plans as well. Mm -hmm. Will they? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you got to say yes now. <laughs> They're coming in two weeks, so I, I hope that, yeah. <laughs> you will. Um, anything on that one? I, I just, I think it's always hard when you're playing a long game like that to maintain your energy and your focus and your consistency and I you know what is the phrase how you eat an elephant is one bite at a time yeah <laughs> well thank Thanks. you for making that comment though Jean because I think that the very reason that it is an, a long-term goal I think is what is giving it power because what what teachers really are frustrated by are the, you know, the initiative of the, of the year mm -hmm. that maybe lasts for two years and they put a lot of energy into it and then it, it disappears and this one's here to stay this is central to what we're doing um, we don't have any new initiatives, none, next year. Um, and, and I think that's a reassuring statement to be able to that's make. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really taking the great work that's happened this year and, just, and, and not just, and continuing to dig deeper. Because as great as we are, um, there's always room for improvement in this area, in this particular area of individual student growth. And harnessing you know we always get such great kids here but that enthusiasm of and we're doing MCAS today so you know I think in harnessing all of that to help to include student goal setting and having make sure that they understand why they're struggling and where they're struggling and and making that be part of our work um, the third goal um, so can I yes please real quick comment on please. the second goal because I, I think there's another element uh, of it which is um, the the communication and education of not just the five of us who are far from education experts, but the community. Uh, this is something I think we've str I know uh, we've struggled with every year we do the evaluation is we think this is going well, but how do we know? Um, so I think you've also done a really good job of making this accessible to people. I, I think about um, it was last year, but the slides that you did that showed the exemplar class and what the, the student, how you measured student growth. Um, this, anytime, again, referencing the book Switch, anytime there is this kind of change, it's not just for the teachers and the administrators, but also the community. How are they accepting the amount of measurement we do of our students? Mm -hmm. There seems like they're always doing an assessment. What are we using this for? And that can be really difficult to explain and runs the risk of you spend time explaining it taking away from the time to actually do it yeah um so i think that that's something that has also been really positive is i think the community feels better educated about what these types of things mean and how we're approaching education differently Good. so i think that's Good. positive here too that i wanted to note thank you and can i just say add one more thing to that um actually I, and i agree and i, I was going to mention that in the community outreach part because of the particularly the forums around math and, and ela where you really walk people through what the focus has been I think that was great but I just I do want to say that you know getting back to really narrowing down this as the focus of the work I think it's important to note that that's because you and the administrative team have also worked so hard to separate the wheat from the chef and take a lot of other things off the plate of the teachers True. who absolutely were feeling like it's Tuesday so it must be new science standards or whatever it is <laughs> so um, so I just wanted to make sure that that got noted and that's a credit to you but also to everybody in yep. the central office and the principals Definitely. I know that's been a tremendous amount of time and energy on your part and a great 
and so you're seeing that the teachers are are feeling more free to do this work which is clearly what's most important so thank you the third goal is the, is a district improvement goal so the first two goals were student learning goals the third goal being a district improvement goal was around uh, really social emotional health and the um, sorry the strategic objective is really looking at school committee policies so in terms of how that affects my work with you and with the community is around policy you know that there was um, definitely some changes to the requirements for the social emotional health curriculum um, we've been talking about all of the things that have been happening you saw the results from the Metro West survey so that's all around this goal um, but I think I'm really mm -hmm. proud of is the diversity forum um, that kind of was not called out in my goal but absolutely falls really directly in this area um, and the the conversation that took place the honest and open conversation that happened at our most recent was just so powerful um, and I have a follow-up you know with with Denise and Tamaria but just today had a conversation um, with Valerie about some ideas that that she has um, in terms of what we can do with that conversation and how we can really be um, really setting new standards as a community about how we embrace our differences so I'm really excited about the beginnings of that and I think that it absolutely is central to our student social emotional health um, and well-being and um, I think I just wanted to see if I put anything else in here yeah that was basically what I wanted to say so I have a comment on that. Um, I mean, certainly, like I said, we, we're limited on time, so I won't go on and on. But I think the other pieces of um, evidence that might be helpful for you on that is that um, your support through the budget process on the START program and on adjustment counselors, because those also speak to valuing the social-emotional health of the students. Mm -hmm. um, and also the results of the Metro West survey and how those um, numbers have decreased in various areas, um, I think should be part of your evidence as well. Um, okay. it, it wasn't that there wasn't anything missing for me, but those were things that yeah. came to mind when Definitely. I thought of other areas within the district that that I truly think your leadership is, is, has pushed forward. So. Okay, that, that would be a great thing to include. Thank you. To me, the best comment that I read about this was just that we didn't just buy a program I know. Yes. and implement yeah. it, I know. but this is a very authentic and genuine effort directed at the needs of the students in our schools right now. Yep. And I, I mean, there's really, I'm not known for my brevity, but there's nothing better than that to say. It's so, so. true, right? And again, the credit goes to the incredible, um, I mean, Bruce Elliott, instrumental, and you know that I've called that out before, but he has been so instrumental in bringing that, that you know, um, mental health, the social, social emotional learning across the district. Um, Carol and I had this conversation just today about making this more of a priority, and it kind of paves the way for us coming back to you and saying, yes, we do want to do that, because I think we have a wonderful PE program. We also have wonderful opportunities for kids outside of, outside of the PE program with all of the sports opportunities, um, and your approval on growing that, for example, with the wrestling team at the middle school and the alpine ski team. I mean, just really great opportunities for kids, and I think continuing to focus on the social emotional side of that through our health and wellness program is absolutely I can tell you unique to this community so um, thank you for that I think the the last one very quickly just say and please. I know that you can't take credit for it but when the student council comes and they tell us about the therapy dogs and the music in the hallways and the late start that one day I know that you I mean that's probably a, a kind of an Evan brain child, definitely Evan but just being supportive of that and yeah. being like no, like stop. No, stop. You know, you're not going to have dogs in the guidance office, and you're not. You know, so but just the yeah. fact that he feels like he can put those kind of programs in place, I right. think, speaks to the fact that he knows that you'd be, you'd have his back in that situation. Yeah. So, and it, obviously, you. when they come and they're so delighted to talk yeah. about the puppies that they got to play with or the cool <laughs> rock music that somebody's iPod bursts or whatever they whatever those kids use these days <laughs> to play their music. Um, but it's it was. I think that's a. That's a really, it's kind of a testament that you're, 
Did I sound like Ralph there? You said 8-track. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never on the 8-track. Of course not. I think the only um, piece I would add to this, Kathy, would be that um, as being a liaison member for CPAC, I think that the, C the special ed community um, does want more of a focus on social emotional for special ed students as well. And I think that they, if, if I'm speaking correctly on behalf of them, it would be that through the elementary grades, they feel like social emotional is definitely a focus for special ed as well as general ed in a very equal manner. But that once you get into the um, middle school and high school, okay. that it becomes um, disjointed. Okay. So I think that for me, if I was to give you any kind of feedback for going forward, that, that would be an area to focus as well. Definitely. Okay. I was going to say for the last one, I, I actually think that um, I would suggest that this would be one when I bring it back to the school committee in the summer, um, that I don't think I need to make a goal any longer. It's just what I do. Um, and I think I call it out as a goal just because I think that that's I suppose I can say I think that that's what superintendents are supposed to do. I've heard one of you say that it's a strength. I consider it a strength that is just kind of not something I have to work at. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like there's other places that I can call out as goals, and and that one, this one just comes easily to me. And so you can see that there's a very full folder about this one, just because um, I just I am always eager to participate um, at community and, and family events and be a partner. I've worked really hard um, over the four years to really increase partnerships across departments in this town. I feel really good about those things, this collaboration, um, you know, with police, with fire, with parks and recreation. Ralph and I had two really great meetings today um, around some of those, some of the collaborative things that we've been trying to put in place. And so this is something that I'm, I am very proud of. Um, and I think that my evidence speaks for itself in this area. I think I maybe would add to that one. Maybe it's not this folder, but um, frequently there are things that happen in our community that you end up taking a lead, if not the lead, on. So my, the most recent example is the gas gate. I feel like you really um, were the one that pushed hard to get information out to the public um, more clearly and just sort of turned up the flame a little bit, I guess, in terms of <laughs> bashing. Jeez, I honestly man. didn't even <laughs> say that on purpose, no. but, but to, um, should probably take that. to get, I don't know, just to, to raise the level of awareness and concern in the community, um, we were, we were not in the loop uh, mm -hmm. for far longer than we should have been, but the minute it came up to your attention, it was your full attention, and um, things have progressed, I think, quickly and far since then. And I'm sure, I I know for certain, that's not the only time that that particular type of thing has happened. I'm not coming up with other examples, but I just, I have seen over the years that you very naturally and quickly fall into a role, I guess, in Lori's example, too, of what can, how, how can we help out with the town hall? Just you you really um, you really are a, a team player, not just in our team, but in the town team and um, operating on behalf of all the people in the town, not just the kids that we have every day. So um, so that was just one thing I thought you should probably give yourself a little more credit for in your thinking. And I would say you, you, to slightly pile on but I think add to it hopefully it, it also whether it's cause or effect it, it's I've noticed in the five years I've been on the committee obviously when I joined the the you you have established yourself in a leadership role in the community so that as an example of the gas gate when people hear you're on it yeah they're okay <laughs> they, they feel like they don't need to worry about it anymore and oh. and that's that's not true across the board of all, uh, you know, of all of the the leadership roles in town. So you've clearly worked hard to establish yourself as a more than credible leader that people trust in the community. Not that this is one of your goals, but you make our lives easier because of course it's one of my goals. <laughs> because you know, because people do 
trust in your leadership and your handling of issues and that if there's something they need to know or the information they need they know they can get it from you so I, I think that's I think that's important to note too is that there's the role you've established and I I agree with you in terms of going forward that this main this probably doesn't need to be a called out goal mm. that this just becomes what what you do I do yeah yep. I mean the other examples of that are you know traffic calming and honestly I would bring up town meeting again not one question was asked of the school budget after you gave your presentation and I think that speaks exactly to what John was talking about is the community seeing you as a, a trustworthy leader and um and 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 the results speak for that as well so um I know I, and I also want to be able to let you go so <laughs> no keep keep it keep it no thank you thank you this is um this has just been just really, really wonderful feedback. I think for anyone, um, I, I was a little nervous because Ashok is still sitting there, and now Alan's just walked in, thank goodness, just now. Um, but, but in all seriousness, having this kind of review in public, um, you know, is something that nobody else has to do. And I, I think it's important for the community to see this transparent and open mm -hmm. dialogue because that's how we improve and that's how, you know, we continue to grow as leaders. Um, and so I, I'm really a little overwhelmed with your feedback, um, and I thank you for all of your kind words. Um, it's been a pleasure, and it's, it's been a really great year, and I think we've accomplished a lot together. So, um, yes, I do have to leave for the second part of my – are we done with that? Thank you. Um, of my report, I will turn it over to the very able hands of Dr. Kavanaugh, who has been – working alongside of me with uh, the learning design team made up of, of Ashok and Carol, Ashok and Karen Zaleski as well, um, on the strategic plan update, which we will bring back to the school committee in a couple of weeks for, you know, school committee's approval on these are the priority initiatives that we, we are recommending be the priorities for next, next week. Um, but she's going to give you an overview. I know in your... Um, in your documents, I gave you a strategic plan folder. Um, so in there is the PowerPoint that we talked about from admin council that the principals were using to take back to their um, school councils in order to prioritize the work as they work on their school improvement plans. So she's going to give you an overview and um, take notes on any feedback that, that you want to provide tonight. But tonight really was just an overview, the deeper discussion on strategic plan we will be coming back to school committee because we will be seeking your approval. Um, but this is an opportunity for some input. And, so, and I'll add to that. So Dr. McLeod and I spoke about that, and you definitely can get packing up. So I can, I can take over a little bit of this. But um, in planning the next agenda and also thinking about the fact that you'll have two new committee members, it didn't make sense for there to be any vote on new strategic initiatives this evening with mm -hmm. Kelly and I departing. So we wanted to give you a preview. But again, um, it looks like what we had originally discussed would be maybe the first meeting in June to yep. give the new members an opportunity to review and get familiar with the existing plan before even looking at what changes might be happening. Um, so that was the thought process there. So thank you. And um, thank you, Dr. Kavanaugh, for sitting in for me this evening. And um, have a good rest of the week. OK, thank you. Right. Thanks, Bye. Kathy. Ralph gets to move back. Ralph gets to be to the big table. <laughs> so as Dr. McLeod said, uh, we started with the strategic plan for the district at central office. And so we have a group of four, um, Ashok Ghosh, Karen Zaleski, uh, Dr. McLeod, and I, and we make up what we call the learning design team. And so what we do is we pretty methodically go through the strategic plan as it has existed from 2014 through 2020, and we think about those things that we have already accomplished. We looked at all of the things that we accomplished in the 16th, 17th school year, and I know that that is part of your packet tonight. Um, we look at what our priority initiatives are going to be in the 17-18 school year, and again, that is part of tonight's packet. Dr. McLeod had put together a PowerPoint presentation, and so after we finish as a learning design team in central office, we take that PowerPoint presentation and we go to all of the building principals at admin council, the assistant principals, 
from Ralph is part of that. Even Kim Polnick is there. Uh, so that all of the people who are part of central office or building administrations, administration get to see uh, what we are looking at for priority initiatives in 1718. And so I don't know if there are particular questions that you have about any of those things that are in your packet or if you would just like me to go through some of the things that we're looking at for 1718. I mean, I think tonight is really just to be like present where we're going and then everyone can kind of sit and mull it over and get to the question aspect of it at the meeting where you're going to actually have your discussion and vote. So. Okay, so I will look at um, our plans for 2017-18. And so we have um, our um, priority initiative of ensuring that we have our individual school improvement plans aligned to the district plan. And as Dr. McLeod just said, she will be having the building principals here in June so that you get to see not only the district plan, but you'll get to see each one of the school improvement plans. I think last year when I came on board, that might have been one of my earliest meetings. And you'll also get to see that the adjustment to practice work that she was just talking about will in fact be part of those um, school improvement plans. The lovely thing, as she has said, is that we don't have a brand spanking new initiative this year. We don't have to face new science standards. We're not starting over with a new math series. Um, so all of the work is really a continuation, and I think we get to roll up our sleeves and really dig deeply. So that will be exciting work. Uh, we will continue to do a whole lot more in the way of professional development and technology planning. Um, part of um, our strategic um, objective number three is to think about building more of that collaborative culture that we have. And I think you've commented on that in terms of the kinds of things that um, that you're seeing. There's that really lovely rapport, I think, that exists between the building principals and Dr. McLeod, where there's that nice balance that they recognize not only is she their boss, but there's also that kind of give and take that, that takes place between them. Um, I think that the work that we did last year with Don Do John Doria will continue this year. So we are very much looking forward to that kind of work. And we also have our aligned curriculum. So uh, when we talk about curriculum instruction and assessment, those things will continue to be our priority initiatives. I know that um, for next year we have things such as the, um, the math curriculum mapping that's happening at the elementary level. We have um, the science mapping that will be happening from grades K to 8. And we do have a whole lot of that work already underway. But what happens when we start to create those kinds of maps is that we start to look at individual lesson plans. So those are sort of the directions that, that we'll be heading in for next year. Uh, we still have our SRSD writing that we're doing. We still have um, Preparation that will start for NIESC at the high school. So when we think about NIESC, they are um, changing up what they used to do. They used to have just one sort of enormous year where we would kind of get on this treadmill and keep going. But now they do that over several years' time. So what we're looking at with, um, with NIESC is um, having all of our curricula at the high school level sort of updated before they get here so that we can ensure that the curriculum that we are seeing um, on paper is also the curriculum that's enacted in the classroom. So I don't know if there are other things that I have omitted from, from that work. I mean, I know I won't be here to discuss it, but just so Dr. McLeod had given us a packet that had some red lines and I guess I'm just trying to understand if we were to look at it from the standpoint of what's changing how would you highlight that for or is it not in here the things that have the the red lines there are places where I think it's just the who Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it's just whose responsibility it is. Yes, it's whose responsibility it is. So if it says LDT, it indicates it's gotcha. the learning design team who would be part of that for some yeah. of the central office. I, I, I like you know, that's something we've done for a couple of years. I like that articulation. I know it's helpful. We talked about the with the, the teachers and how much is on them, but really calling out who's going to be responsible so that no one party looks at this 
strategic plan goals and says, oh my gosh, we're going to get basically an avalanche of, of work to do, but it's really clear whose responsibility is. I think that's got to be helpful. And I know that in the past several years, there's been this sort of distributed leadership model so that at the high school, we have subject matter leaders. And when, you know, when I arrived, it's, you know, you don't know how much work those folks actually do, but it's amazing. It's measurable how much work they actually put in. Um, I can just give you an example with the science standards changing because the science standards used to be very content-based, and now we're transitioning to looking at how all of the scientific principles and practices are embedded in there, and so they will actually take all of their curricula and sort of self-eval and then go back and look at the standards again to ensure that, that what they're doing actually matches what the state asks them to do. And at the K-8 to eight level, we have the CTLs, and they are also doing an enormous amount of curriculum writing, and they have no time outside of the classroom. So everything that they do is really beyond the regular school day, and then they have to find time during the regular school day to articulate that information to each other across the grade level. So it really is an important, I think, sort of hierarchical process that we have. Yeah, I think just in general, as I was saying earlier with my quick remarks, just when you're a parent in this district, you think about who does my kid have for a teacher, are they doing well, how's the school, maybe, you know, but this level of over you know oversight and just coordination like before i got onto this committee i didn't realize so it's just so powerful to understand like i'm guessing if i looked back at my education i don't know how much of this stuff existed and it's just the the evolution of how you know running you're running a company like this is a company <laughs> so far, yes. and it's there's just there's a ton in here and i hope that the public to the best of their ability appreciates what goes on behind the scenes because this is this is huge and the fact that it really hasn't changed much in four years is amazing because I know putting it together that was right before my time like just all the work that you guys did and Gene and John were here for that part just putting it together was huge and the fact that it's held up so well is is very impressive that it has held up so well so yeah I mean I think the fact that we're seeing such it's also not that like we stuck with the losing <laughs> no, no. proposition it's either. Still, we're really seeing the results um, right. from it. So I really, I really was struck by that as I was going through. I guess probably a combination of looking at this and looking at um, all of the the folders of evidence. Just really struck by the vision that Kathy had walking in the door. Yeah. That really, I mean, she was dead on mm -hmm. um, in her evaluation and assessment of where we needed to go right from the get-go and um and i do you know i i agree i think with what you just said john it's 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 so jargon heavy and you know it's definitely an educator kind of a document but it's clear when you look in there that it's distributed across a lot of people um so it isn't overly burdensome on any one particular person but in addition everybody's also kind of bought into it and a part of it and not separate from it which is important as well and so clearly we're seeing really positive results now three years into the work um, in terms of what we've been able to present at town meeting and whatnot and you know and I'll just my final point is I like how many times it says in there no budget impact <laughs> um, <laughs> which I think again goes to the comment that somebody made in Kathy's survey which is we just we didn't just buy a program or hire a person this is homegrown you know roll up your sleeves what do we need you know where do we need to go where do we need to get and how are we going to get there and who how are we each going to take part in that um so i just i think you're exactly right kelly this is a very powerful document and it's been well utilized not shelved um so i think it's great and i, I you know i'm excited to hear about what we're going to be doing focusing on next year yeah, and I think that utilization piece is key. If you think about it, um, the high school is a, a school where, and this does not happen in many high schools, where students can leave a teacher at the mid-year mm -hmm. and move into another classroom, which enables them to take a wider selection of elective courses. So that means that those curricula have to be uh, guaranteed, viable, and rigorous across both sections. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we're finding. So those curriculum documents are living. You know, the, the kinds of changes that happen there, it, we know that they are happening not just in one person's classroom, but across the board. And I think that that's kind of one of the exciting pieces um, district-wide, really, is that we have a very good sense of, 
of what's being taught and that regardless of whether you have a third grade child, a sixth grade science student, a 10th grade language arts kid, um, they are getting common experiences and common assessments. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that that um, is true everywhere and I don't think that it has been true um, for a long time. I think that the work has been, has been really um, rich here. Thank you, Dr. Kavanaugh. Um, I believe next is our quarterly financial with Mr. Dumas. I will be very brief <laughs> because I know Alan wants to go home. Um, so the biggest change between the uh, second quarter and the third quarter uh, is in the area of uh, expenses in the facilities area. Um, if you look at the recap down at the bottom, the expense accounts, really the only thing that's uh, in any way different is the grounds maintenance and the buildings and equipment maintenance. As you know, we had issues last fall with our fields. We had issues again this spring with our fields. The issues this spring were rain related, but you know a lot of work had to be done in a very, very short period of time, which necessitated bringing in some outside uh, help to get that done. It was authorized uh, by, uh, by me and uh, Dr. McLeod. Uh, in the buildings and equipment maintenance, what we're talking about there are issues in our buildings such as HVAC issues. You know, we had a tap into the budget for the Hopkins boiler. There was some work needed uh, on a water heater. It's just a lot of little things that just simply add up to a lot of money. So um, when all is said and done, we still have a positive variance of in the vicinity of two hundred and seventy-five thousand uh, dollars, and uh, you know, um, what will you know? It, we're, I'm pretty sure that that's a that's a solid number. I I, I can't see that number uh, going up or down by a, a great amount of money. Um, so as we did last year, we'll come forward to you in June with a request to uh, make some prepayments. And probably the simplest prepayment to make is to prepay the accept transportation um, because it's one invoice as opposed to breaking it down, uh, you know, into a number of sped tuition prepayments. I'd rather give the money uh, to um, accept which we're a member of, I, um, rather than give it to um, a private uh, school. I'd rather have Accept hold our money for us and credit it uh, towards next year's um, next year's payment. So um, there's really not a lot in there, uh, as I said. John, uh, you seem as though you have What a, do we pay Accept for transportation? Well, for? next year the number is uh, up a lot. Uh, yeah, off the top of my head, it's between four and five hundred thousand. So it's well in excess of two seventy five. Absolutely. Okay. And Absolutely. then and there's no there's no cap on what we can prepay. So we can just easily do the two two seventy five and sort of one check. When you when you're prepaying a, a collaborative of which you're a member, there's no cap. Okay. Is the Elmwood door in the buildings and equipment maintenance? Yes it is. Thank you for pointing that out because I overlooked that. That is a minute. Yeah, I just point out from a practice perspective. I mean, somebody might look at this and and realize that the the positive variances we have the two hundred seventy five thousand dollars is almost due entirely to the prepayments that we did last year. Right? That's correct. So it's it's almost. I mean, so we essentially carry a soft reserve um, yeah. from from year to year, um, and so I I just want to make a yeah. plug. I know we'll do the year end balance things, the transfers you're talking about at the next meeting, but. I think this continues to be a positive practice. I think that there are, you see examples of this, such as snow and ice on the town side where you have these unexpected pieces. So I just want to make sure this is sort of one of those messages to the public that while we might not have used it this year, I think this continues to be a responsible practice because we don't know what's going to come in these in these future years in terms of unexpected sped placements. Absolutely. And it's good to have that soft reserve. I mean, we saw that this year, um, you know, Every month I could have come to you and said, 
we need to do a budget transfer yep. uh, re related to either ELL or, or SPED or buildings for that matter. So um, it's been an interesting year. And I just thank goodness that we did make those prepayments last year. Well, and I just, I really, <clears throat> since this is probably your last uh, quarter summary to us, is it? Yeah, because the fourth quarter, you, you don't see the final until right. August. Until August, right. So, yeah. so I just, you know, I don't want to let it go without saying, um, you know, I know we deal with a, a staggering amount of money that we're responsible for here that the town is generous enough to give us. But I just, I really think this is such a transparent communication to the community about uh, you're never going to get a $42 million budget to come out exactly to zero. And it's so clear by reading this where the changes are, what's been unexpected. You know, clearly with athletic fields, first we didn't have enough rain, now we have too much rain. <laughs> you know, it's like exactly. can't, just cannot get a break with yeah. our athletic fields this year. But the Hopkins boiler, Kelly, as you pointed out, is like half of that expense um and i think john you just made a really excellent case for our our sped tuition so i just i think it's really easy for people if they take the time to look at this to understand it's a level of um insight into our accounting and finances that i don't think is very common i don't know about other towns but not across our town and so i just really want to thank you because this has been an evolving process and You've done a great job with this. It's been really easy for a non-math girl to understand it, so I appreciate it. I think the most difficult part about understanding that snapshot is that it's all about variances. It's not about how much you've spent. It's not about how much you budgeted. It's what are the differences. Right. Exactly. And that's really what should matter. Right. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Ralph. You're welcome. Um, Next on under new business, actually, Mr. Dumas, we have the capital projects for department article warrant 17-072 in the amount of $51,881, jeez, I can't even count tonight, $51,881.65. <laughs> so the um, three of the four invoices are related to the Hopkins and High School roof projects. And that should uh, close out those projects. Uh, and um, then there's another invoice on the uh, system-wide security upgrades. So Dr. McLeod and I uh, recommend that you approve the payment of warrant 17064 um, as, uh, as written in the recommended motion. Great. Any questions? All right. Um, yeah, actually, I do have one because um, so I know in the in the agenda it says 1764, but I think on the actual warrant it oh. says 1772. It is 1772. Sure. Okay, so I just want to make sure we approve the yeah. right one. Yeah, I just read what was in the motion. Yeah. I thought we had picked that up. Okay. So. Oh, in the motion. Yeah. All right, I okay. see what you're talking about. Thanks, John. All right. So Luckily, I was reading that line yeah. when yeah, you said 1764. I, oh. I was like, wait, that doesn't make sense. So. We should maybe read that carefully for Sue for the minutes. Yeah. I will read it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. At this time, I would seek a motion to approve the payment of warrant number 17-072 in the amount of $51,881.65 to the vendors as outlined in the agenda materials. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Graziano, seconded by Mrs. Cavanaugh. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Yes, and it's unanimous and so carries. Mr. Dumas, I think we're done with you tonight, right? Uh, I'm going to stick around and pick up the warrants. So. Um, did anyone sign them? No. You can drop them off tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm in town. Yeah, okay. there's That's other right. stuff to give to Carol at the end, too. So. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you're you. On your own. Yeah, unless you want to hang around. Yeah. I don't know. I'm actually a single man on Thursday nights. You know? <laughs> <laughs> We'll live it and up, this Ralph. This is where you'd like to spend that time. <laughs> yeah. I hear Cornell's is open. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So our next item under new business is school choice. Dr. Kavanaugh. Sure. So the superintendent recommends that the Hopkinton Public Schools do not participate in school choice for the 2017-18 school year. Um, at this point, our enrollments are very high. Um, in some places, we are either at or even in excess of capacity. If you think about the eighth grade class, the rising ninth graders, there are so many of them um, that we really do not need uh, 
to invite additional students to participate in our programming. Any questions? And as you all heard, we did not have any public comment one way or the other. So at this time, I would seek a motion to approve the superintendent's recommendation not to participate in school choice for the 2017-2018 school year. So moved. Second. Motion by Mrs. Birchman, seconded by Mrs. Cavanaugh. All those in favor? Yes. 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 yes, and it's unanimous and so carries. All right, item C, EpiPen delegation renewal. Dr. Cavanaugh. Okay, so the superintendent um, does recommend to approve the renewal for EpiPen delegation um, to train unlicensed school personnel as required every two years by the Massachusetts Department of Public Health. In your packet, you do have uh, the information on Catherine Bain, who is the nurse who is trained to um, help our unlicensed school personnel um, learn how to administer the EpiPen. And so that might involve you know, bus drivers, um, school personnel, and really to have as many trained people as you can is advantageous. And because um, Nurse Bain is able to do that for us um, without incurring a cost, it's you know, financially sound as well. Great. Any questions? All right. At this time, I would seek a motion to approve the renewal for EpiPen delegation and administration under the direction of Catherine Bain, district nurse leader in Hopkinton. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Graziano, seconded by Mrs. Cavanaugh. All those in favor? Yes. 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 And it's unanimous and so carries. Can I ask a related but not pertinent probably question? <laughs> um, are we going, should we expect at some point to see a similar request about Narcan? Now that we have that in the schools, I don't know if that's just not kind of caught up, but if that's something that people need to be trained on or no. But I know we have it in at least all middle the school and high school, all the schools. Yeah, um, I would think that that is true, but I don't, I don't have the official answer for you as to who is trained right now and, um, and who just, will be trained. If we need to do question. anything to facilitate that, I'm sure we would be happy to do that. But it just struck me as we were doing it. I wondered if that was similar. Yeah. I will make a note of that and we can get you that information. Thank you. All right, next on our agenda is middle school handbooks, Mr. Keller. I love that all the principals came to see us tonight. Just wish us good luck on our last meeting. And oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Glad it worked out that way. Says the person who planned the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, I will say. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't force any principals to be here. That was Dr. McLeod. <laughs> Feel free. Take it away. All right, I will. Thank you. Um, so um, so we have not a lot of changes, actually, to the 2017-2018 proposed middle school student and parent handbook. Um, you have the document that has all the changes. I'm just going to highlight a few. And, of course, if you have any questions on the highlighted ones or other ones, please feel free to let me know. Uh, as I think you know, we have a new uh, middle school mission statement, so we wanted to make sure that that was front and center. Also, as you know, um, we are no longer using iPass, and instead of using PowerSchool, so references to iPass have been replaced with PowerSchool and also School Messenger for the way that we communicate with families. Um, we have learned that uh, giving a combination lock to every single child is uh, neither an effective use of our time or students' time, uh, nor is it uh, cost-effective because a lot of students were losing them. So instead, we're highly encouraging students to take a combination lock from us, but uh, we are not uh, distributing one to every single child. Uh, and then also, you may recall that in December of this year, or of 2017, this of this school year, uh, we changed our honor roll calculation. So uh, we're now making sure that that is uh, in our current handbook. Um, so that's included. And then we never actually made reference to how long students needed to be in school for early release days in, in order for uh, them to participate in after school activities. So that uh, is two hours, and that's now included in this handbook. And just for one clarification, I think that the date on that next to last bullet is 12-1-16. Just for clarification. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Can I just have a little celebration that at least for the second, if not the third year, you're not mentioning the dress code. <laughs> I was so. waiting for Jane to mention awesome. that I wasn't mentioning the dress code. Yeah. So. No, that's, that's all very Thank good. You. Yes, Thank I you. believe our, our first three or four years together. That think we that spent a lot of time yeah. talking about that. Yeah. It was an annual <laughs> tradition. I think I asked a question in my first year why the dress code wasn't in there, and then I got the... So it's been a while. Uh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> All right. Then I will seek a motion to approve the amendments made to the middle school handbook as outlined in the agenda materials. So moved. Second. 
Motion by Mrs. Birchman, seconded by Mr. Graziano. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. and it's unanimous, and so carries. Thank you. Mr. Keller, we are on again for the student activities account for robotics. Right, so um, we've been, we're in, in, a, in a fortunate position. So we have had um, the last two years, uh, so two years ago, Robotics Club started, and um, both last year and this year, our robotics club has qualified for the uh, world uh, finals, and and that's in. So I'm forgetting it. I think it's in Tennessee. Kentucky, Tennessee. <laughs> Di, where's Di? Tennessee. Di, Tennessee. Di Tennessee. Tennessee. Robotics was Kentucky, and so. World. Goes to Kentucky. <laughs> yes, um, so it's very, very uh, exciting. Um, kind of a little bit of problem that's happening is so many students want to participate and so in trying to manage that what we've decided is that we need to uh, increase the number of teams in the robotics club uh, so that we can decrease the number of participants on uh, on the teams because we just felt like and the, and the coach just feels like it's too many students are having to kind of sit around and stand around when um, they obviously the goal is to have them involved and so um, in order to do that we need to order more VEX kits um, and those kinds of things. So there's, it, and it's pretty expensive. And so what we're looking to do, and talking to Dr. McLeod and talking to uh, Ralph Dumas, would be uh, within the student activities account, creating a robotics sub account. And we've been again fortunate enough to have uh, a lot of um, funding over the past couple of years from parents and organizations, and so um, and through the HPTA. And so we are um, hoping to set up a, a, a robotics sub account under student activities. Um, where we could uh, keep that money and pay for things like student registrations when they when and if they qualify. I, I shouldn't assume that they're going to qualify every year. Uh, that's quite an accomplishment. So when and if they qualify for the world championship in order to and also to order uh, additional VEX kits so we can have more teams participating. Great. That's an exciting uh, thing to be in need of. Mm -hmm. To see yeah. that much participation and that much interest in it. And it, it I, I'm proud to say that our district has so much enthusiasm for the robotics, both at the middle school and the high school. I would certainly think what's going on at the middle school is going to really strengthen even what's already going on at the high school. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's been a really exciting addition, and I think I'm, I'm confident Doug Scott has presented to you before. He's brought a lot of energy and a lot of expertise uh, to the program, so we're in a, a really great place. Well, I think they're also breeding it in Elmwood because there's a robotics extracurricular offered at the Elmwood school um, through the HPTA, and I know my daughter participated in it, so I think they're they're getting the bug pretty early. <laughs> and does Hopkins have something as well? I don't know because I haven't been there yet. <laughs> they did. They, 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 they had a club they that they did. were yeah. actually meeting in the middle school uh, a few times this year, so it's, yeah. Oh, they had it's really an extracurricular cool. too. Yeah, Mr. I think they did have yeah, Mr. Harrow did it on wood, but I don't know if he did Hopkins. I think there he did, was one he did Hopkins, Hopkins too. too. Yeah, it was it sold out. Yeah, you know, immediately it was very popular. So. Any um, questions about the new account? Okay. All right. I will seek a motion to approve the addition of the club account. Should I call it the robotic? Oh no, the club account within the middle school student activities account for robotics. So moved. Second. Motion by Mrs. Birchman, seconded by Mrs. Cavanaugh. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Yes, and it's unanimous, and so carries. Thank you so much, Mr. Keller, for coming in for both of these. Of course. It. Thank you for having me, and thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you for uh, working with us as well. It's been great. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm not single tonight, but um, I, <laughs> I also will depart. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Um, so, as I said at the start of the meeting, we are going to move the discussion of the superintendent's salary adjustment to after executive session when we re, um, reconvene in open session. Um, so, we'll move on to our second opportunity for public comment. Is there anyone here who would like to speak? Uh, you need to come up. Um, yeah. He wants to try out the chairs. <laughs> yeah, public comment has to be on mic, and you have to announce your name and address and and then Kelly's going to time you. Oh, that's it. <laughs> we let her try out different shoes. That's what I said, yeah. Mina Paddock, 239 Street, and it's directed towards the outgoing uh, school committee members. I'm just about getting an appreciation of the effort it takes and the dedication to be on the school committee. You have given um, you know, many years of service. So as a parent and as a community member, I want to thank you. Oh, thank, thank you very you. much. And I hope all the rich experience that you've got and you know, to what Kelly was saying, will continue to be a voice. So we'll need that. We could definitely benefit from it. So hopefully, you know, we really, really hope as parents and community members that you'll continue to stay engaged. Thank you, Thanks. and good luck with your term. 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You have two minutes and 20 seconds left. <laughs> <laughs> I keep talking. Um, lose that all right, so <laughs> yeah. we do have <laughs> items by consensus, and there's a lengthy one. So I do want to make sure that there was nothing that needed to be corrected or added or changed, and it looks like Nancy's nodding yes. So should we pull something out? I wanted to pull out the minutes of February 2nd. I, I had a typo that needed to be fixed. Okay. Um, a typo that needs to be fixed. All right, so we're going to pull out the February 2nd and vote the rest that are listed March 16th, April 6th, April 13th, and May 1st. Is that correct? I haven't, some of them sh I, were carried over from the last meeting, so I have to look back through, but yes, I believe that is correct. Okay, did anyone else have any ones of the items by consensus they want to pull out? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then I, I mean, I can seek the motion, Dr. Cavanaugh. You don't have to seek it if you want to, but um, then I would, seek a motion to approve the items by consensus as outlined below and as amended in relation to February 2nd, 2017 minutes. So moved. Second. <laughs> we're just trying to, we're just trying right, to elongate it for you guys. <laughs> um, motion by Mr. Graziano, seconded by Mrs. Birchman. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Yes, and it's unanimous and so carries. Okay, at this time, I would seek a motion to enter into executive session for the purpose of the construct conducting strategy Wait, sessions. Second, we February 2nd. These, these we the February 2nd. Typo. Oh, it's just oh we can fix them here? Okay, sorry. Yeah, let's do so that. So the mistake is on the time of adjournment. I just copied it over wrong. The time of adjournment should have been 9.35 instead of 10, 10 16. Do you have that, Dr. Kavanaugh, or do you want me to send it? To yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So at this time, I would seek a motion to approve the minutes of the regular school committee meeting dated February 2nd, 2017, as amended in regards to the adjournment time. Yes. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Graziano, seconded by Mrs. Kavanaugh. All those in favor? Yes. 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 And that's unanimous, and so carries. Um, I signed those minutes, so we need to pull those ones out. Okay. Um, and if Megan needs me to sign them tomorrow or Monday, I can go ahead and sign them. Okay. The, okay, so we're now into executive session. And Dr. Kavanaugh, you are free to go as well because you don't need to stick around until we come back from that. Um, Thank you. Did we sign the warrant? Yeah, we will do that right this time um, so that she can take him back to central office. I hope you can sign the pink. All right, so we will be coming back to open session. Um, it's up to you on whether or not you want to stay live or not. Um, and we will then have one more vote after we re-enter um, open session. We, at this time, I am seeking a motion to enter executive session for conducting strategy sessions in preparation for negotiation with non-unit personnel as well as to review executive session minutes for the meetings of February 2nd and March 16th. And then we will reconvene in open session for the purpose of um, finalizing our last agenda item and then adjournment. So moved. Second. A motion by Mr. Graziano, seconded by Ms. Knight. Um, this is a roll call vote. Jean? Yes. Uh, Nancy? Yes. John? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Nami? Yes. And we are now entering into executive session.
so we have the last item under new business. Wait, should we draw this out? Or <laughs> I'm voting no on adjournment. Um, which is the superintendent salary adjustment. And what was under consideration was salary adjustments approved for the administrative team, specifically Dr. McLeod, to maintain competitive compensation in relation to other superintendents um, in the state. So at this time, if there's no further discussion or comments needed, okay, then I would seek a motion to approve the 4.5% increase to the superintendent salary for fiscal year 17-18. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Graziano, seconded by Ms. Sorry. Birchman. Um, all those. In I know you asked for comment earlier, but I just want to. We did just discuss this in executive. <laughs> I'm not long, trying to draw out your last meeting, but we did just discuss. <laughs> this, we just have this discussion in executive session, and I just think it's appropriate for the public meeting to say that um, you know that that we, people heard us in this meeting provide a mid-cycle review of Dr. McLeod, and this is just I think another indication of how pleased the committee is. Um, with the leadership and work of Dr. McLeod in this role, um, we're, and we're happy to recognize that um, through this action as well. So I just don't want all the great conversation we had in there to get lost, that this is really a reflection of, of the wonderful job that she's doing, and we hope she keeps doing for a very long time. Very good point. Thank you. Maybe when I say discussion, that would have come up, but thank you. <laughs> all right. Who's ready to Definitely vote? Definitely vote no in adjournment. <laughs> <laughs> this will be. This meeting is never ending. Do we ending. have to roll call this one because we did it in executive session? I can't hurt. All right. So Close we'll, we'll, we'll do a roll call vote. It was a motion by Mr. Graziano, seconded by Mrs. Birchman. Jean? Yes. Nancy? Yes. John? Yes. Kelly? Yes. And I'm a yes. And it's unanimous and so carries. And at this time, I would seek a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion <laughs> <laughs> do it without you. You should have delayed and made the two of them do it. Motion oh, by sorry. Mr. Graziano. I didn't move for that. No. no, you're right. Sorry. Motion by Mrs. Birchman, seconded by Mrs. Knight. All those in favor. Discussion. Yes. Discussion? There's no discussion. Yes. What are you going to vote? And it's unanimous. Is it unanimous? Yes, yes. it's unanimous. Oh, and so geez. carries. And we are now adjourned at 9.30. And our next meeting, which I will be sad to not be a part of, will be on May 25th at 7 p.m. here in the high school library where there will be a regular meeting as well as a school committee reorg meeting. And then June 8th and again on June 22nd. And thank you and good night.